Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to have you here. I am extremely excited today because these are videos I can only make once a year. So today I actually upgraded from my iPhone 13 Pro to the iPhone 14 Pro. I did end up keeping the 256 gigabytes as that is what I had in this phone and I enjoyed that. I didn't end up going up because I think you can go all the way up to one terabyte of storage for those of you who are wondering, but it does get a little pricey when you start to do that. I think the phone ends up being like $1,500 when you do that. So today we are going to be unboxing the new iPhone 14 Pro in the color Space Black. So let's go unbox this. We're also going to set it up. I'm gonna show you the case I bought for it. We're gonna put the screen protector on. We're pretty much gonna do all of that today. So let's go over to my desk and unbox it. Okay, y'all, so here is the new iPhone 14. Pro. Let's get to unboxing it, which this is my favorite part of doing these videos. Aww. I feel like that's the music I need when I open them. So this is what the iPhone 14 Pro looks like right out of the box. I did not think I would like this color as much as I do. Now here is it in just like indoor office lighting with my filming camera. So I will clearly bring this outside so that I could show you how this color looks in natural lighting. So let's keep going. I'm extremely excited. This is my favorite part and like I think the most satisfying part. So with the new iPhone 14 Pro, we no longer have the notch that is at the top. So that's something different that clearly you notice right when you open the phone. And then here is what the sides look like. Again, it has like that very metallic, shiny material that the iPhone 13 Pros had. I definitely think the layout is pretty similar, like the iPhone 13 Pro to the iPhone 14. A big difference that I do notice is clearly the notch that we have here. So if I show you my iPhone 13 Pro, this is how my iPhone 13 Pro looks with which I clearly need to wipe down. As you could tell, the iPhone 13 Pro has the notch on it and the iPhone 14 Pro does it. And then another thing that I have noticed is on the back, the camera is heightened a bit more. So you can tell that the cameras are heightened here. But as you could tell with the iPhone 13 Pro, it was coming out a little bit or heightened a little bit, definitely not as much as the iPhone 14. So those are the two big differences that I see with the layout and design of the iPhone 14 Pro. So let's see what came in the box. It's probably the same stuff that came in the box last year, which was this like informational thing. And then you get your cute little Apple sticker. And then you have your USB-C charger that we have been getting lately. So let's take all of this off. So this is the same USB-C charger. Even with the old iPhone, it was the same charger. So that is all that comes in the box this year, which was pretty much the same thing as last year. So if we look at it one more time here, the differences, oh, that was what I wanted to check too. I wanted to check if they moved the buttons. Someone said that they moved them in different spots. So yeah, if you compare them, they actually moved the buttons down for both sides when you compare the iPhones. So it, it's just slightly moved. So clearly if you have any old iPhone 13, cases you're gonna have to get new cases to go on this phone because they won't be compatible when it comes to the buttons that have moved plus the camera that has gotten bigger so now I wanted to put on not only the case but the screen protector before we move on to setting the phone up so this is the same screen protector I got last year this is the simplest screen protector that I have found to put on by yourself. I am the worst when it comes to putting on screen protectors uh, when you actually buy it from the store. So these are the ones that I have done really good with the past couple years using because I used the same one last year, but I want to definitely put on the screen protector first. So let's get to opening this. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> Fail. So if you do end up getting this specific screen protector, they actually have a lifetime warranty on it. So if it breaks, then you are able to get it replaced and you don't have to buy a new one. Thank you. 
Okay, y'all, I successfully did it. <laughs> I thought I was gonna mess it up, but I'm so glad I didn't. So now the screen protector is on and this is how the phone looks. Now it is time to set it up. Going from my iPhone 13 Pro to my iPhone 14 Pro. So let's turn it on and see what it says. Hello. So it says to slide to open in the United States. Quick start, bring your current iPhone or iPad near the phone to sign in and set up. Okay, set up new iPhone, continue. And then it says, hold your new iPhone like this. I wonder if it's gonna be able to get all my apps on here correctly. So set up for me. Okay, so now we're onto the part with the face ID. Oh. I just noticed that I don't think you guys will be able to see it, but there's like a little green dot right there on the dynamic island that they now have. So let's do face ID. Okay, we can do this. Let me move my hair out of the way. I'm gonna set up the face ID with mask later because my masks are all in the car. Oh, that's cute. Okay, face ID is now set up. Okay, so I am going to do this. This said it could take an hour and 45 minutes while downloading from the iCloud could take 15, but I'm going to ask my husband which one I should do. I don't remember which one I did last year. So I will see you guys once I transfer all of my data over and we will see the new iPhone. Okay, y'all, so we have officially gotten into my iPhone 14 Pro. This is what it looks like even with the lock screen. So this is the lock screen. As you guys know, there is a new setting called the always on feature. I will definitely be playing around with this and seeing if I like it. And then I will definitely do an update video on things I like and don't like about this new iPhone 14. But this is one of the new updates for the always on features so that you could always see the time and the date and everything like that, even when your phone is locked. So I thought that was interesting to see. And then when you do click on your phone, this is what it pops up to when your phone is actually on. And then if I do use my face ID to unlock it, this is what it looks like. And then you could swipe up. As of right now, I did have some issues with getting my apps over onto this phone. So I'm gonna mess with it tonight and fix all of that. But right now, this is what it looks like if you update the phone and you don't get any of your apps transferred over. So while we are here, I also wanted to put on my case. I actually got the Apple silicone case. I'm probably gonna use this until my case to fi case comes in. I can show you guys a picture of what that's gonna look like. So this case is in the color Midnight. I thought it was a really good good like combo when it comes to going with the iPhone 14 Pro in the space black. So let's get to unboxing this and see what it looks like. So this is what the back of the phone looks like with the case. And then this is what the front of the phone looks like with the case. I think it's really cute. I think this really complements like the black color that iPhone came out with. So what we are going to do now is I'm going to finish setting up my iPhone. So I am going to actually get all of my apps set up. I'm going to pretty much make this phone exactly like my iPhone 13 Pro. Before I show you guys the side-by-side -side picture, I wanted to show you guys this new feature, the Dynamic Island. So as you guys know, on all previous iPhones, they had what is called a notch, which is this little area right here that's like blacked out with the camera and everything. So now iPhone got rid of the notch because I know a lot of people complained about it in the past and they have now come out with something called the dynamic island, which is this little pill shaped thing right here. So I thought I would show you guys a little bit how that works, then give you my opinion on it. So one of the way it actually works is with music. So if you were to, for example, play a song and weren't actually in the music section as you could see up here it is showing not only the music playing but who it's playing by and if you actually hold this down it will show you guys the song who's playing and you are able to skip it here instead of having to go all the way over to the actual music section on your phone so say I'm listening to music but then I want to go over to my timer and put a 15 minute timer on for cooking or anything like that once you start that and you exit out of it that will also be added to the top with your dynamic island so here you can also hold that down and see the timer or you can go back and hold this down to see the music and also to skip music or anything like that so you can also use multiple things to do this another feature that i really liked is when you're making phone calls or someone is calling you so i'm going to use my husband's phone to call me but i will be able to show you guys what it looks like when someone is trying to call you and you are on your phone 
So these are the two differences. Now that you have the dynamic island, instead of the phone call popping up on your phone to start with, it will actually pop up on your dynamic island. So you can either answer it or decline it. And then it will actually give you an option to change the speaker. Another cool thing that I found about it is when it actually goes away, like the phone call, when you answer it, it will show the volume levels on the right. And then on the left, it'll show how long you've been on the phone. And again, if you hold the dynamic island down, you can see who you're calling, you can end the call or you can put it on speaker and change where you can hear the phone call from. So I think that this addition to iPhones pretty much taking away the notch and adding this is a pretty cool feature that I think a lot of people are going to enjoy. It's one of the biggest differences between the 13 and the 14. So I thought that that was a pretty cool thing. So now let's look at the differences in photos and camera of the 13 Pro to the 14 Pro. So I just showed you guys the dynamic island versus the notch. So now I kind of wanted to go over the new camera feature. So if you guys did not know, they did upgrade the camera a little bit from the 13 Pro to the 14 Pro. So now the 14 Pro has 48 megapixels versus the 12 megapixel previously. So that's really going to be able to show you guys like smaller itty bitty details that you probably wouldn't be able to capture in the 13 Pro. You will probably be able to capture in the 14 Pro. They also stated that the camera for the 14 Pro would do better for low light photos. So for example, if you're indoors and you don't have great lighting, if you are outdoors and it's nighttime and whatnot. So I did take some pictures at night and I I took some pictures indoors. Another detail that they did add was the action mode, which I think is really cool. So that's gonna be the first thing I'm going to show you guys. So what action mode is meant to do is pretty much stop the shakiness that you would get if you were filming a video on your phone and moving around. So I know myself, even when I don't have my vlogging camera with me, I will vlog on my phone and it gets really shaky sometimes where I don't even want to actually use that footage in my vlog. So I ended up actually running. So both of these videos that I am showing you right now are me running and like my phone shaking everywhere. It's pretty stable in my opinion. So I thought that was really cool. Now I thought that we would look at side-by-side -side photos that I took with the 13 Pro and the 14 Pro. So here I just literally took a picture of the ground outside. And if you zoom into both sides of the ground that I did show, you get a lot more of those little details coming out than you do with the 13 Pro. The 13 Pro I feel like has a lot more like a blurred effect if you do zoom in versus the 14 Pro is a lot more detailed. And then I decided to just take a selfie of myself. So clearly on the left, this is where I can really notice it. Not when you're taking pictures of other things like the ground or scenery or your cup of coffee. So I feel like the biggest difference you're going to see is taking photos of yourself or somebody else, a person where you're going to really see those little detail changes. Then I wanted to kind of look at the photos we took last night. So we were in a restaurant. We were in, was it Longhorn? I believe so and their lighting is very dark so the hubs actually took three photos of me the first one here is just a regular photo it's not in portrait mode or anything like that and I thought that that was a really good photo I didn't have my 13 pro on me to do a side by side of how it would look with the 13 pro versus the 14 so my bad on that but I did take a picture in that low lighting that Apple said would show a big difference then if I swipe to the right I did take one in portrait mode and this is the result of that I felt like it was a really good quality photo then I decided to take a photo outside with no flash, see how the photo would come up. And this is how the photo looked in portrait mode on the iPhone 14 Pro with no flash, no lighting, no anything like that. And you could tell it really brightened up my face and everything when taking the photo, even without flash on. So I'd be curious to see how this looks with flash. And lastly, for photo slash video, I wanted to just take three different style videos, a video of myself with the 13 Pro and 14 Pro, and then just a video of of like greenery and stuff like that, kind of like I did with the photos to show the difference of the two with video. So here is a video on the camera facing you, like if you were to take a selfie. Here is the side-by-side -side video. I'll just keep replaying it for you guys. On the left is the 13 Pro, on the right is the 14 Pro. So you could kind of see the difference. Again, I don't think it's a big difference. Now, if we go over to the video of the tree that I took, and this is how the video looked. Again, not too big of a difference in my opinion. So that is pretty much all for my 14 Pro unboxing and setup. Now I kind of wanted to answer the question of would I recommend upgrading from the 13 Pro to the 14 Pro? In my opinion, probably not unless you are someone that is looking forward to the dynamic island. So not having that notch anymore. If that's a feature that you're really excited for and you're in the mood for an upgrade,
upgrade or if you are wanting to upgrade the camera when it comes to not having 48 megapixels I would definitely recommend the 14 Pro but if you are someone who doesn't really use your camera much and you don't really care about the notch I think that these phones are very similar the backs are similar the style when it comes to the colors are very similar I think that the phone itself is pretty similar I'm also curious are you going to be someone to upgrade your phone to the iPhone 14 and if you are which one are you going to get as you guys know they have the iPhone 14 the iPhone 14 plus the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max so they did come out with four different phones now I will say if you are someone that still has like the iPhone 11 or the X series I know my old phone from two years ago or the phone from last year that I actually decided to upgrade when I got my iPhone 13 Pro I had the iPhone XR I believe and that was a huge change to jump to the iPhone 13 Pro everything was different camera quality was wildly insane like wildly better so if you're someone that's coming from that phone like an iPhone 11 or the X series I would definitely recommend upgrading if you are someone coming from that the camera quality just everything is going to be a lot better in my opinion it's going to run a lot faster battery life's going to be better so I would recommend that if you are someone who doesn't have the 13 Pro and you are upgrading from that if you are upgrading from one of those earlier phones I would definitely recommend the upgrade so I will definitely do an updated video in about a week or two I'm going to really test out 14 Pro I'm going to mess with it I'm going to use it for a couple weeks and then I will come back with kind of an update video on how I feel with making this upgrade and if I again would recommend it these are just my first impressions with the phone this clearly isn't me having the phone for weeks on weeks and then being able to test it out and give my opinion this is just my first impressions with the new iPhone 14 Pro so also how many times did I say iPhone 14 Pro in this video I feel like it was a lot so with that being said I hope that you guys enjoyed this video be on the lookout for next week's video I should be getting my new Apple watch 8 series which I'm going to do an unboxing of and testing it out for you guys so I can't wait to make more content for y'all so again definitely comment down below what phone you're gonna be upgrading to and what color are you going to get and with that being said don't forget to leave a like and a comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you guys in the next video Thank you.